Funding for this episode of Beyond the Menu is provided in part by Gulf Power, part of the Florida Power and Light family, safely providing exceptional customer value by delivering reliable, affordable, and environmentally responsible cleaner energy, and by TLC Caregivers, serving Escambia, Santa Rosa, Okaloosa, and Walton Counties, providing high-quality in-home personal care assistance to those in need while maintaining their dignity and independence. This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Founded in 1559, the coastal community of Pensacola has a long history and diverse culture. The downtown area has deep roots in this city's rich past, embracing and preserving its cultural and historic heritage. If you're looking for something good to eat, you won't have to look too hard. Being surrounded by fresh seafood and abundant farmlands, Pensacola's highly revered chefs always have something tasty to offer, along with a distinctive and cozy atmosphere. Let's go beyond the menu and take a look at a few of the culinary delights this friendly Gulf Coast town is serving up. In 1888, physician John Brosnaham built this two-story brick and stucco structure on a parcel of property that once held Pensacola's Spanish Fort in 1752 and the British Fort in 1763. Today, this historic building is home to the district. Seville Steak and Seafood, located across the street from the Seville Quarter Entertainment Complex. Opened in 2018, the district has created an inviting dining experience while keeping the historic architectural integrity of this old world setting. The executive chef of the district studied culinary arts at the Art Institute of Atlanta and has been delighting diners with his impressive resume of steak and seafood creations for over 25 years. Chef Josh Warner, thank you so much for having us today. It's my pleasure, Sherry. Been enjoying looking around. Um, lots of historical significance in this building. Tell us about it. Well, this building has been here uh, since the 1880s. Um, this ground that you're walking on is the very ground that Andrew Jackson walked on when he went to take possession of uh, this territory uh, from the Spanish governor Cayaba uh, back in the 1820s. Wow. So it's, it's been here for a long time and it's been many things. Many things and now it's, now it's the district. That's, it is. That's wonderful. It is. Very significant place. Well, besides the fact that you have parts of the original Spanish and British forts in the restaurant, what, what do you think sets the district apart a little bit from others in Pensacola's uh, really booming food scene? Well, as you can see here, we have a really beautiful lounge setting. And we've got a wonderful player piano, uh, a balcony that really no one else has uh, in town. But really the, the number one thing that sets us apart from everybody else is our food. The quality of steaks that I buy uh, is unmatched in this area. And also I'm doing something that nobody else in the area is doing, and that is I'm dry aging all of my own beef right here in house in our dry age locker. And just a quick, you know, wet aging versus dry aging. Wet age, they uh, take the cuts of meat, they vacuum seal them, and then they put them on a shelf for, you know, three or four weeks which is great, and we, we serve great wet aged steaks as well, but then dry aging is they take that cut of meat and we put it right there uh, on the rack in our temperature and humidity controlled dry aging room, and we dry age it for at least five weeks. I like to go at least 35 days, and that just gives the, uh, the meat, you know, enzymes and everything break it down really well, gives it a really great, more intense beef flavor. You're losing a lot of the moisture, so that really concentrates that beef flavor, and it's just unmatched uh, by anything else. Chef, the name of the restaurant implies that you curate some amazing seafood dishes as well. Absolutely. We've got some great seafood here at the district. Uh, one of my favorite dishes is the Parmesan Crusted Scallops. I've been doing this dish for a long time. I did it up in Atlanta when I was there. 
Um, I take really great dry pack scallops, so they're never soaking any kind of chemicals or anything, just fresh out of the sea, uh, from Massachusetts. We bred those in a Parmesan uh, breading serum, served over a Maine lobster risotto with uh, red and yellow roasted tomatoes and balsamic reduction basil oil. Really great, really popular dish. Uh, I've been serving it for a long time, people love it. Uh, we also have a great calamari dish, uh, salmon, uh, shrimp, oysters, um, and then I get all kinds of beautiful fish out of the Gulf right here. You know, we're just steps away from the Gulf, so we get lots of great seafood out of that. We do fun specials with it all the time, and so it's really great, especially being here and being able to get this great local seafood. Um, it's really, really special. I was going to say it's got to be a fun job for you. It is. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. That's, I've been doing it for almost three decades, so yeah. I guess I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> So Josh, one of your uh, signature dishes really is the tomahawk. Tell us about that. So my tomahawk steak is a beautiful steak. Uh, it's certified Angus beef, which all of my steaks are 100% uh, on my menu. Certified Angus beef is a uh, brand name. It's a, to, to be able to be called certified Angus beef, it has to meet uh, over 10 points of strict criteria, you know, size of the animal, uh, marbling content, all those things. And what that means is everything is very, very consistent. Every time I get it in from the purveyor, uh, every time that steak is cooked and brought to the table, it's gonna be the exact same thing. It's gonna have the exact same quality of marbling, flavor, tenderness, all those things. So the tomahawk is a ribeye, um, and it's like the Fred Flintstone steak, some people will call it. It's got the big 12-inch bone. Uh, it's 38, 40 ounces. Um, we slice that uh, in the kitchen and serve it. It feeds two people and it's just a really great crowd pleaser. We dry age that for at least 35 days and it's just melt in your mouth, absolute delicious beef, beef, beef flavor. I imagine it's a go-to dish for a lot of celebrations. It really is. Uh, it's perfect for date night and it's, it's quite, a, quite a big steak so I always like to tell people at the table when they say, chef, it's so great but I can't eat anymore. So well, it makes a great steak and eggs in the morning. I'll bet, I'll bet. Chef, looking at all this gorgeous food, I can't imagine having room for dessert, but um, I would hope that people would save room for it because you've got some amazing desserts as well. We do, we have some really great desserts uh, that my pastry chef Eden comes up with. Uh, one of them is our signature, the District Dome, uh, which is a really fun, shareable dessert. And what it is is, uh, it's a piece of chocolate cheesecake, a little cheesecake dome, uh, some whipped cream, and then we have a molded chocolate dome that she molds by hand. It's a painstaking process. And we bring that out to the table with a little bit of raspberry ice cream, homemade raspberry ice cream. Um, we make everything from scratch. Uh, and we bring that out to the table with some hot raspberry sauce. The server pours that uh, onto the chocolate dome, which is on top, of it, which is covering up the dessert. And then that melts away, uh, l revealing the dessert underneath. And people are just blown away. It's a lot of fun. It's really great to, to go talk to people and to see their faces uh, when that dome is, is melting open. Um, it's really special, um, and we have several other great desserts as well, uh, and we always change them up. Uh, you know, she's always doing a great job with that, so it's a lot of fun. Yeah, there's a lot more to eat than just steak, seafood here at the district. Well, and that dome, um, how many people typically will, will try that? Would it be for two people, four people? Uh, I would say two people it's really designed for. It's not actually that huge, but um, yeah, people can share it. And we do, sometimes, you know, we'll have an eight top or so, and I've seen four domes go out, and the servers all pour them at the same time, and it's really, really neat to see all that. Spectacular. Everything's just beautiful, Chef, and you are really creating something special for our Beyond the Menu viewers as well. We want our viewers to experience just what they're watching. What are you creating for us? So for the WSRE viewers that make a donation, um, they're gonna get our mouth-watering uh, marinated beef skewers. And uh, normally I only have that available upstairs in the lounge, but we're gonna have that available for this only uh, downstairs as well. And um, you know, it's a really great opportunity for people that may have not tried our beef yet or had dry aged beef yet, because what it is, you know, we cut everything in-house. We cut all of our, our, we get these great big loins of beef, 
uh, with bones in it, with all kinds of things, and we cut it into our beautiful steaks. Well, not every little piece of those loins is gonna fit into a perfect steak, so there's what we call trim. The same exact meat, it's beef tenderloin, it's New York strip, it's ribeye, it's wet aged, it's dry aged, there's little pieces of dry edge in there, and when you get one, you can really tell the difference. We marinate that, we skewer them, we grill them. Uh, we serve that with our district steak sauce that we make right here in house, uh, our atomic horse radish cream sauce, um, and we're gonna offer that uh, with the donation uh, with a glass of either Hayes Ranch Cabernet or Chardonnay, uh, which is a great wine from California that we serve here at the district. Um, and it's just a great value, a great deal, um, and a really great way to help out WSRE as well. I imagine when somebody experiences that, you're telling me you're getting all kinds of different flavors of beef is what I'm hearing. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's all that top quality stuff. Um, it's, a, it's a really great way to, to kind of enter into that world of, of dry aged beef. Hand chosen pieces by you. That's right. Yeah. Well, Chef, you have partnered with WSRE PBS for quite a long time now. Do tell us why that you support PBS and WSRE the way you do, and um, just what makes it important to you. Well, Sherry, public television is so important. Um, you know, I've been watching it my entire life, from Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers, uh, to then I started watching, you know, Julia Child and Graham Kerr and Yan Ken Cook, you know, and that, uh, those shows, you know, really kind of put me on the path that I am on, you know, that I went down and inspired me to become a chef or, and had an impact on that. Um, so it's so important that, you know, today's youth and even up through adulthood, um, we still have public television and we're able to, you know, watch things like that. So that's, you know, a big part of the reason that I, that I do this. And uh, I moved here to Pensacola five years ago. Um, I've been doing events with WSRE, the Food and Wine Classic, all that, uh, since I've been down here. So that, I was at the Grand Marlin, you know, doing the fun ones on the beach, like the pirate one I remember, that was a really fun event. Um, and just to get together with the community, um, you know, a lot of our customers, uh, our clientele, help support uh, public television. So it's a really great event for us as well to be able to connect with the community, um, give back a little bit, and uh, you know, get our name out there and you know, get people to help try the food that may not have tried it before. Very true. And so I'm hearing you say you were really inspired as a chef even um, by some mm -hmm. of those shows that you saw over the years. Right, and you know, the great programming on, on stations like WSRE, uh, and it's just important that, that you know, we support that and the, the public is able to um, you know, support that and also enjoy themselves with a great uh, you know, offer like this. Well, I love that people are getting to know you a little bit and hear more about the way you put things together. I love that very much. Well, for a donation of $100 to your WSRE PBS, we are assembling a pack of dining vouchers for you to experience the historical yet contemporary atmosphere of the district and the other fine restaurants that are highlighted in this episode of Beyond the Menu. Your voucher pack will include one special dish from each restaurant, along with a paired glass of wine. We encourage you to participate in this interactive television experience to see and enjoy Pensacola's thriving food culture for yourself. Call or log on to our secure website to make your donation today. Quantities of dining vouchers are limited, so don't delay in showing your support of local restaurants and local public television. We want to thank you, Chef Josh Warner, so very much for showing us around today. It's my pleasure, Sherry, and we can't wait to see all those great WSRE viewers here at the district. As the name implies, Hot Roast and Pinot is all about comfort food and a distinctive wine selection. Now located in the center of downtown Pensacola, this modern eatery sprang from humble beginnings on Cervantes Street back in 2013. 
It was established in a renovated diner that had been vacant for so long that the police department had grown accustomed to pulling cars over in the parking lot. I'm here with Pot Roast and Pinot owner Amy Wilson. Well, Amy, it all started on Cervantes Street, but since 2018, you've designed and moved into your new location here on Palafox. That's right. After five years and dozens of wine-themed dinners, we moved to our new home on Palafox. So where are you located exactly? We're located in the historic Brent and Blunt buildings in downtown Pensacola. So it's in that breezeway? It is. We actually renovated it from the ground up. When we first took it over, it was just dirt. Was it really? Yes. So do you, is some of the brick would be original, I would imagine. All the brick is original, and I definitely had a hand in painting the ceiling and sanding down the bar. So it was a labor of love. Well, I'm sure. And, you know, we talked about um, in, in the opening of this about the, the specials that, that you used to run um, in your old Cervantes Street location in the old diner. Tell us, let's, let's back up a little bit and hear about that. So we used to run a blue light special and it would be because the cops would pull over cars in our parking lot because it used to be a vacant building before we took it over and we would actually offer 30% off bottles of wine during that blue light special. It was a little awkward, so we're really happy that we're in a new location now where we don't have that. So you made the best of an interesting situation there. But now you have uh, this, uh, this beautiful location, but the comfort food and the, the feel of it all is still very much here. A little elevated, right? Yes, we consider it upscale comfort food with a twist. So we offer a lot of the same dishes that we offered when we were at the old location, but we've added some new, exciting dishes as well. So obviously, comfort food is something that's so important to people and their lives. How would you describe comfort food and what do you think it does for people? You know, it just varies for people. Comfort food is something that calms them down when they're having a bad day or it's just something that they remember when they grew up with, so it just depends. But comfort food, it just, it, it hits home with everybody. It doesn't matter who you are, there's always something out there that's comforting to you, food-wise. And our menu definitely includes a lot of those popular items. Well, in addition to comfort food, you have quite a wine list and um, you do all kinds of themed experiences, I understand. Yeah, we've been very fortunate and we've put together quite a few themed dinners over the years and we're continuing to do it in our new space. So we do wine tastings in our breezeway and that happens every so many months. We also do wine dinners where we have a special um, person from the winery coming out to speak about the wines and we pair it with amazing food that we prepare that's not normally on the menu. So you're just creating these experiences for diners uh, to learn more about the food that they're eating and the wine they're drinking, is that correct? That's correct, and we also do it with liquor, so we've had quite a few successful liquor experiences. Why don't you tell us about some of the people that come here for destination events? I mean, you have just so many different things to offer, um, anniversaries, Yes, we definitely get a lot of anniversaries, birthdays. We've been doing a lot of wedding rehearsal dinners as well. So they just really like to select us. We make it a little bit special for them. We actually give them a card um, like you would get for a birthday or a celebration. And we offer them a little special, like they can get a free glass of wine or a free dessert on the house just to commemorate their special occasion. That's nice. And they can work with you personally to make it just the way they want it to be, correct? Correct. Yeah. Well, and since you've moved, um, not only do you offer pot roast and lots of comfort dishes um, and lots of different wines, but you have a beautiful new bar. Tell us about that and the experience of the cocktails that you offer. Yes, we do quite a few um, specialty cocktails that are very popular with our guests. You might be a little surprised you wouldn't realize that a place called Pot Roast and Pino has a cocktail program but we offer the Spice Hibiscus Margarita that's very popular and just many other cocktails that they just really enjoy. So we have a really nice happy hour that people like to come attend. Mm -hmm. Well, and so they like happy hour, they like to come for special events, but I'm sure that the quality of food that you offer really is the thing that brings people back over and over again. Let's talk about that. 
Yes, the, the food is made fresh in-house. Um, we have an open kitchen here so you can see them cooking. You don't have to worry about them putting it in a microwave and warming it up. You know, you can actually see it's fresh food that's prepared. And the chefs have fun with it, I understand. Yes, with it being an open kitchen, they're just really delighted to see the guests enjoy the food that they just created. And they're happy and singing and just having a good time. And so are the guests. If you're special enough to get a seat at our chef's counter, you really are in for a treat because you get to see all the action up there. Amy, many modern restaurants these days are embracing gluten-free, vegan options, and you have something wonderful now. Would you describe that for us? So we have a dish that's called the Impossible Bolognese. You might have heard of Bolognese before. It's a very popular Italian dish, but we do it slightly differently. We take impossible meat, which is plant-based protein, and put that into our bolognese sauce, which includes celery, onions, tomatoes, and herbs. And we put all of this over a gluten-free penne pasta. And we put a little bit of local basil on top of it. And we also have a dairy-free cheese that we put on top of it. Meat eaters will never know. You could have a, a gentleman who's really into meat and potatoes order this dish and he would be very pleasantly surprised to know that it's quite filling. That's what I'm loving about the impossible meat is that it is, it, it's good for anybody that would enjoy it, correct? Correct. Yeah. I understand you have something for the, the big meat eater called a Bloody Mary Burger. What's that yes, about? Yes, the Bloody Mary Burger. It's an eight ounce patty of brisket and short rib, and we cook it to perfection. And it goes on top of a brioche bun, and we do a Bloody Mary tapenade, which includes pickled okra, pickled green beans, pickled onions, and we melt provolone cheese on top of it. And it's just decadent and hearty for a brunch. Sounds like a great uh, brunch for after a night on the town in Pensacola, really. If you don't wanna have a Bloody Mary, you can have a Bloody Mary burger. What kind of comments do you get about it? Oh, people love it. They think that the saltiness and just the pickled stuff in it, it's just very different from a classic burger. And it sounds like an excellent way to kind of start the day. Yeah. Yes, it is a wonderful way to start the day. Amy, being situated here on the Gulf Coast, a lot of people really expect seafood. They want seafood. They know it's close to your restaurant. Tell us about a seafood dish that you have that everyone loves. So on our appetizer menu, we have our crab claws. And what it is is blue crab claws and fingerling potatoes, and it's topped with this really creamy garlic parmesan aioli. And we throw it into the oven and it becomes bubbly and we serve it with warm Asiago bread and also lavash flatbread on top of it. And people just love taking that flatbread and the bread and dipping it into the sauce and eating the claws. And when the claws are all gone, you still have some potato pieces. And so it's just a nice, wonderful seafood dish to enjoy. And it's just a winner. People love that appetizer. Well, when you start dipping your bread, then you really are into the comfort food, right? That is correct. So you know you're doing something right when you see the diners out there doing that. Speaking of diners, um, my understanding is that you are creating a dining experience that's exclusive to our WSRE viewers, correct? Would you tell us about that? So we're really excited. We put together an appetizer sampler of three items that are very popular on our menu. And the first one's gonna be potato tots. We make them in house with a touch of thyme and we drop them in the fryer and they're just hot and delicious. And we top it with grated pecorino and a small drizzle of white truffle oil. So that's gonna be the first item. So the next item is gonna be our deviled eggs. And this has been a signature item since day one that we've been open. It has a creamy texture and it's topped with a thick cut bacon slice. The third item is gonna be our egg rolls. So this is a signature item that got created after we started plating our pot roast. We would have extra pieces when we would cut our pieces, little shavings that we decided that we needed a way to use them. And so we would take the little shavings of our pot roast, mix it together with caramelized onions and provolone cheese and wrap it together in an egg roll. And it's definitely a fan favorite. 
It looks amazing. And then in addition to giving that to our viewers as part of uh, the voucher, you're pairing this with uh, some wines. Yeah, so for each appetizer selection on that trio, you'll get a glass of wine, a little sample of three different wines. We're including a Malbec, a Pinot Grigio, and a blend. It's very generous of you, and um, I know viewers will be um, anxious to get in here for that. And to be clear again, the only time they can get this particular pairing at, with this particular wine is when they get involved in this interactive dining experience that we're providing, correct? Yeah, so if they come in with that dining voucher, then they'll be able to order this special item created for WSRE. Amy, we just love that you're doing this interactive experience with WSRE, but giving back to the community seems to be very important to you. Yes, yeah, so it actually all started with WSRE. That was the first nonprofit that we partnered with, and we've continued on with Mana Food Bank, uh, Sunday's Child, First City Arts Center, Pensacola Museum of Art, the list goes on and on. Well, we really appreciate, Amy, that giving back is so important to you. And um, viewers, for your donation of $100 to WSRE PBS, we're assembling a pack of dining vouchers for you to experience upscale comfort with a relaxed vibe at Pot Roast and Pino and the other fine restaurants highlighted in this episode of Beyond the Menu. Your voucher pack will include one special dish from each restaurant, along with a paired glass of wine. We encourage you to participate in this interactive television experience to see and enjoy Pensacola's thriving food culture for yourself. Call or log on to our secure website to make your donation today. Quantities of dining vouchers are limited, so don't delay in showing your support of local restaurants and local public television. Amy, we want to thank you and Pot Roast and Pino for your time, for this beautiful dish, and for your longtime support of WSRE. We just love working with WSRE, and we're really excited to see your viewers coming in with their dining vouchers to enjoy the special dish that we created. Founded by McGuire and Molly Martin in 1977, a local landmark in Pensacola's food culture is McGuire's Irish Pub. Originally located in Town & Country Plaza, McGuire's moved to its current site in 1982. This iconic structure on East Gregory Street was built in 1927. It was the home of Pensacola's Firehouse No. 2. The building was then purchased around 1950 and became the old firehouse drive-in. Drive-up diners were served curbside by car hops. The McGuire's brand has remained consistent over the years, and the 20,000 square foot building draws thousands of people every year to check out the themed dining accommodations. Well, I'm here with the chef of McGuire's Irish Pub, Chris Tingle. Now, Chris, when people think of McGuire, so many times they're thinking about being surrounded by a million one-dollar bills. Um, but this place just has so much history. Can you just start out by telling us how it evolved to the place that it is today? Well, it started out with Miss Molly and her first dollar. So she, in 1977, was actually taking care of the uh, customers in the front, McGuire's in the back, cooking the food and taking care of the bar. Okay, so Molly got a tip, first dollar, put her name on it. And that was in 1977 and put up on the wall. So that's what started it. And we really aren't sure right now, it's a million plus as far as dollars up there, but everybody who signs a dollar is now an official Irishman. And we'll give you a card, they'll ring the bells, they'll do everything that they can, you know, to acknowledge you. And you put a dollar up, then it'll be there. And Molly, is her dollar still up? Is yes, it around? Yes, it is. It's yeah. right outside the wine cellar, where we're at right now. Well, and Molly, Molly's dollar is there. That's amazing. Yep. And there are so many themed rooms here. People that have been to McGuire's 
can come back and see something different just about every time. I've been here for 17 years this tour, and I worked here before. Um, I still find stuff here that I haven't seen, and that's how much there is to actually look at. The pictures are amazing. Um, the actors, the actresses, the sports figures, the just, I, there's icons that have come through, and of course they're gonna sign a dollar and put it up. And then we'll commemorate them, and, and you can just come through, and, and you'll spend hours, you know, just looking at it. So. It's incredible. It's almost like everybody that's anybody has been to McGuire's. It seems like it, that's for sure. Yeah. And if you haven't, <laughs> come see us. Absolutely. And the room that we're in right now is the wine cellar. Yep, it's the wine cellar. Quite impressive. They did tremendous work, and this actually wasn't part of the original building. Um, you know, they, they ended up adding on as we've expanded over the years, and the wine cellar was definitely one of the most impressive buildings that they've built. The wine cellar itself holds over 8,000 bottles of wine, and, and also the Mouton Rothschild vertical collection that we have, one of the very few in the United States. You'll have to check on that before you buy a bottle. Yeah, just give you a call. Yes. Yes. No. Uh, that's so you incredible. Can, you can, but you can come in and look at it, and that's the best thing. As you come in, you're not necessarily wanting to buy it, but you might be able to see it and see something you've never seen before. So that's what's great about McGuire is he goes out of his way to, to find things that people haven't seen, and you'll see that in artwork that he has, you know, pub signs from England and Ireland that he has bought, you know, that decorate the rooms that we have. No one, you know, no one really goes the way that he goes and buys stuff just for you to, just to appreciate, you know, and I said, that's what he loves. He just loves for you to see something that you've never seen before. So, and the food is incredible, but it's just surrounded by all these different amazing things. Let's talk about some of your favorite rooms at McGuire's. Um, definitely lately, uh, we just put in the Blue Angel rooms. And of course, they're iconic, they're amazing. Our military is amazing. Um, the Navy is a big part of Pensacola. They've been here way longer than I have and that's what we support. We support our military. And then you're looking at, you know, just the heroes, you know, that they have put aside in that building. The stuff that these people have done is, is incredible. And that's what we really like is, you know, we want to, we want to focus on, on people that achieve. And, you know, they said, you want to do good for everybody. And that's, that's, that's what we do. You know, I said the same thing of our people in the kitchen and our cooks. Like I said, they're, they're no different. They, they work hard every day. That's amazing. It's really, really an awesome situation. Do the Blue Angels to do a lot of military people come in and have meals? Oh yeah, every day. Uh -huh. And what no. about some of the other rooms? Now, the next one I really mm -hmm. like and I'd like to talk about is Piper's Den. Um, and we have a bagpipers band that is just awesome. And they travel all over the world. They travel up to, you know, they do parades wherever they can. Um, they're always here for our St. Patty's Day run. And, you know, there's, they come through on Friday and Saturday nights. And, you know, when you have bagpipers come through your dining room, it just, it just livens you up. You know, you're just sitting there looking like, oh, wow, this just gets me pumped up and I'm ready to have a good time. And that's all we care about at McGuire's is having a good time. You know, we want you to come in and enjoy yourself. And I'm going to talk about the last room uh, that I really care about is the pub. And of course, that's where the action happens. Okay, all right, dirty limericks. <laughs> okay, they're fun. It doesn't happen until after 11. And then you're looking at just the camaraderie. You know, everybody tilting the glass. You know, you're tapping your beer, you're tapping your wine, and then just having a good time. And that's all we want. You know, we want you singing along. We want you going, hey, this is a great night. And that's what we're about. It's so. a total experience, isn't it? You're talking about tapping uh, mugs of beer. You have a brewery. We do. Um, the oldest craft brewery in Florida that's um, still sustaining, started in 1988. Um, they uh, have done incredible things with their brewery over these years. And this is a long time going. And you're looking at award-winning, best Florida beer, um, they they do a really really good job, and you know you have to love an ale. You know I said that's it. You know so you're coming in here. These guys are making it. It's fresh ingredients. 
There's no additives, there's no preservatives, there's no anything added to it. And then we run through it, sell it, and then you drink it, you're good. So we've talked about the wonderful wine cellar that you have, incredible, and an amazing award-winning brewery. And um, you've got to have pub fair with, with all of that. So one of the favorite things I think on the menu are the, the Reuben egg rolls. They are. Um, thanks to Robert Irvine, he put us on the map as far as the Rugen egg rolls came out. And it was a great appetizer. You know, you're taking an egg roll and you're putting corned beef, sauerkraut, Swiss cheese, and caraway into it. And then it was just, it just took off. You know, I said people just loved it. And it's a great way to start your meal. They're hand rolled every day. We have, we have a young man that comes in every morning and he rolls two to 3,000 a week. They're um, fresh corned beef that we boil, okay, briskets, and then it's chopped. It's mixed with sauerkraut, Swiss cheese, and caraway, and then they roll them up. They're deep fried and served with a Thousand Island dressing. And it's basically a Reuben and a egg roll. It's, it's a wonderful appetizer. It starts great. Um, you know, once you get everybody to have one, you're just ready for a beer or a glass of wine, and next thing you know, you're moving on to the next one. We're talking about pub fare, and you can't have pub fare without having a lot of burgers on the menu. What do, what do we have today? Um, today, we're gonna do uh, the Big Daddy Burger, and we did that on Outrageous Foods on the Food Network. Um, Big Daddy came in, and he did a great show for us, and we'd, we had a great time filming it. Um, and then when he looked at this burger, it wasn't even his at the time, but he said, man, that looks like my burger. And I said, well, we'll just go ahead and name it after you. And that's how the Big Daddy Burger came about. And uh, it's jalapenos, apple bacon, uh, cheddar cheese, and our patty is just short of a pound, okay, is what you're looking at. So we're not really playing, and, and we don't mind if you take it to go box, okay? That's a good thing. So, you know, I said, you can eat, you get in here. We want to make sure you're happy and you're full. So, Chef, there's a huge variety of burgers. Lots of people that walk through the door the first time in, they say, oh, wow, I want to try the burger. But in addition to that, you've got all kinds of other things. We do. We have a tremendous variety of burgers. You can, you can make what you want on the menu. And then you also have plenty of other options, seafood, steaks, pastas. You know, we have... We have it all. Well, let's talk about the steak. Um, what we're gonna do is, uh, I would go for the prime New York strip. Um, that's my favorite steak. It's a prime USDA cut, uh, 16 ounces, and it's seasoned with McGuire's Steak Shake. We do homemade onion rings, a steak tomato that is blue cheese, mozzarella, and your side. It's uh, the most incredible taste you can have as far as I'm concerned here. I love the, the, love the prime strip. So it's served beautifully, but a lot of preparation goes into it, really. It does, and it comes out, it'll be sizzling, it'll be smoking on your, uh, on your table with a hot sizzle platter and garlic butter. And uh, it, it just really appeals to everyone. You know, when you just go through the dining room, everybody sees it coming through, or you see them coming through. And it just, it really sets the atmosphere. Everything just sounds wonderful. It's time now to let our viewers know what they're going to experience when they come to McGuire's as a result of our partnership. What we're gonna do this year is uh, offer the Jameson Irish pork chops. It's a wonderful dish. They are prime pork, which are very, very marbled. They are so much, there's so much flavor into them, it's amazing. We make a whiskey glaze out of Jameson whiskey it's, it's just awesome. It comes with a homemade applesauce and then your choice of sides and then of course our homemade onion rings. And that's what we're gonna do for that with a glass of Mark West uh, Pinot Noir will be our wine that we're featuring. And uh, it's, a, it's a great compliment. They go together really, really good. And people who've had the pork chops or have talked about them, I said, we're, we're, we're hoping that everybody really enjoys what they get. I'm sure they will. And you talk about a great pairing. I think it's a great pairing of McGuire's and WSRE, right. DBS. You do a lot of partnerships around. And why is this important to you, Chef? 
Mm, been with PBS for a long time. I think I was about three or so when I started watching it, and that was a long time ago. So I love PBS, you know. I said, where I grew up in Mississippi, there wasn't anything. Uh, we had PBS, and that was our that was our go-to. So you love it, and you have to support everything that actually contributes and makes people better, and that's what PBS does. Mm -hmm. And and you do a lot of partnerships in the community. We do. We um, we we deal with the uh, the police department locally. We deal with the fire department. We deal with all of our first responders, and we care about them and what they have to deal with as well. We appreciate that so much. And uh, for a donation of $100 to your WSRE PBS, we are assembling a pack of dining vouchers for you to experience the eclectic themes and lively atmosphere at McGuire's and the other fine restaurants that are highlighted in this episode of Beyond the Menu. Your voucher pack will include one special dish from each restaurant along with a paired glass of wine. We encourage you to participate in this interactive television experience to see and enjoy Pensacola's thriving food culture for yourself. Call or log on to our secure website to make your donation today. Quantities of dining vouchers are limited, so don't delay in showing your support of local restaurants and local public television. Chef Chris Tingle, we have had a wonderful time visiting with you today. We have had a great time as well. Uh, we only want to please people, make sure everybody's happy. Um, please make a contribution to PBS and get your voucher so you can come in and try our great food and we'll make sure you're happy. Long sit-down counters served by waitstaff in a unique casual environment characterized the American diner, which had its heyday in Pensacola long ago. Affectionately known as the Shiny Diner, the Scenic 90 Cafe opened its doors in 1999. Upon entering this retro eatery, guests are transported back to the 1950s and nostalgia is abundant from the sparkling chrome and vinyl bar stools to the brilliant neon lighting accents. Fresh pies and cakes fill the pie case, tempting your sweet tooth. Here is a place you can get a hand-spun milkshake, and the diner sitting behind the counter delight at watching the fresh squeezed orange juice machine crank out their favorite breakfast beverage. The menu at the Scenic 90 Cafe is a mix of diner favorites, southern fare, and seafood offerings for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. The executive chef and owner of Scenic 90 Cafe is Gus Syllabus. Now, Chef, many people know you as the owner and operator of Scopolo's, but I don't know that everybody knows that you run the shiny diner as well. Yeah, it's always a shock sometimes to people that uh, realize that I do. Um, and of course, you know, I started working at Scopolo's when I was uh, 11 and what have you. But when I went to culinary school up in New York, the diners were everywhere. And uh, one year with my family, we were traveling up the Blue Ridge Mountains and saw a diner. I said, we got to stop. So we went inside and uh, started talking to the manager and come to find out there was a manufacturer in Florida that was making these diners. Nice. So that's where the interest started and, and you know, talked to them and, and I thought Pensacola would be, you know, a great place to, to have a diner because there wasn't one there. Uh, so that's how all this started to, to put the diner here in Pensacola. That's a great story and when people walk through the doors it really just takes them back. You start out with the double doors and you walk in and you feel like you're in another place in time really. You do, you really do and that's what we wanted to do is to build that nostalgia um, and honestly even in, in the process of, of choosing and, and the, dec the decorations and everything that we wanted in here, the pictures that they picked up on the wall, uh, which most of them are from Jimmy Hayward that, that has done it, you know, through Pensacola Old Pictures, St. Carlos, the old Scenic Highway, what have you. Uh, so it was great to just, you know, bring it in here. 
uh, not really have to, to build it here. And uh, quite honestly, that day was the biggest rubbernecking that ever has happened in Pensacola. So people were going to work, imagine down Scenic Highway, empty lot. During the day, three trucks come in because the diner came in three pieces with the cranes, lifted it off the uh, trucks and placed it down. So on their way home, there was a building there. <laughs> it was like, yeah. what? did that fall out of the sky or what? It, it was, yeah, it was really uh, incredible. Well, the ceiling tile, the floor, did you just take so much time with all the design? We did, we did, we really did. We wanted to have that retro look and that, you know, really homely type place to, to be, you know, a neighborhood place. And, and that's what it has been. And, and we're very pleased with, you know, with the outcome and the response of, of everyone. I mean, this is for many people home away from home. Uh, many of the, you know, individuals that are either widows or widowers, whatever, they've always have, have uh, come sometimes two or three times a day, you know, and, and just the counter there is just awesome because they, they can enter interact with our staff and and of course the other thing is having younger staff here that many of them have gone on to do uh, bigger and better things that, that that was their first job here you know doing the, the soda fountain counter there uh, during the, the summer months away from uh, when they were out of school so it's it's been really a neat neat environment place all the way around great place to gather like home as yeah, you said yeah, yeah I mean the kids you know, families come in here, uh, older people. I mean, it's just the, the whole gamut. And and, uh, and the menu reflects that, you know, the, that's the other thing that I wanted to do was to, you know, the diners up north, of course, they have a mile long menu. I didn't want to have it that long, but you know, over the years it has kind of uh, grown, uh, but we have everything from breakfast all day to raw oysters. I mean, the seafood. So we try to take everything, you know, in, uh, and, and try to have the variety. And, and even now that we started doing some vegan dishes, uh, you know, for, for again, the guests that have been asking and looking for something that, uh, that's different. So we've kind of covered the gamut and you, it is pretty much a mile long, not quite, but um, let's start with breakfast because you serve all day long. What would you recommend to somebody that's coming in here and just really wanting something great for breakfast? So again, we have from Eggs Benedict, and within Eggs Benedict, we do a smoky Egg Benedict, where we have a smoker out there that we do the, the smoke ribs, and then we do the Eggs Benedict on top. We have some of the most, I think, uh, variety of omelets, from the Greek omelet, the, the, we do the Euro, the new one that we just put in, the Southern omelet, that has fried green tomatoes, bacon, pimento cheese. I don't know how much Southern you can get than that, you know? I mean, they're just, such a variety and then we also have the lighter side where we have the yogurt parfait you know that we build with the fresh fruit the strawberries the kiwi the bananas the yogurt the granola you know and and it's just again everything that they can have and a lot of people really which i never knew because i guess you know we, we tend to eat breakfast or eggs you know during the course of the day but there's so many people that that love to have a breakfast in the evening you know in the afternoon so, Chef, you were telling me about the omelet. Let, somebody walks in and orders that. What What are you going to put in front of them exactly? Sure. So we start with three eggs. So our, all of our omelets are three eggs. And what we also do is we whip our omelets. So we don't do the traditional where it's just a folded type omelet. I always felt like, you know, when you see an omelet, you want to go, wow. And, and that's what we, we try to do. So three eggs that we whip. And so for the southern omelet, for instance, we do the fried green tomatoes. We fry them, we cut them up, we do bacon, crispy bacon, and then pimento cheese. So we blend all those together with the eggs, fold it, and then we serve that with the uh, home fries, uh, which we do the red potatoes with the onions. There's nothing better than, than those two combinations. As a matter of fact, you know, years ago, my grandfather had a, a restaurant in Pensacola uh, down on uh, Gregory Street during World War II. And um, he was telling my family, which I got the story afterwards, that at times when they weren't busy, they would throw onions on the flat grill to get the aroma going because <laughs> that just started the juices to, to get hungry and everything. So onions, I guess, always have that uh, magical uh, uh, aroma to them. And then we always do the, the biscuit or some kind of a toast uh, with the omelet as well. Very Southern, but Northerners Very southern. will love it as well. Yes. 
And then we transition into lunch. Yes. So for lunch, one of the sandwiches, of course, uh, being a Greek restaurant or Greek background, uh, we have the gyro. Uh, so the gyro we do traditionally uh, with the uh, mixture of lamb and beef uh, uh, slices. And then we make the jajiki sauce. So we use Greek uh, yogurt uh, with the cucumber and olive oil and, and garlic and a little bit of dill. It has the lettuce, tomato, and the red onion. We uh, put all that in the pita and then you can have different accompaniments in the case of french fries or onion rings or any other vegetable. We actually have over 22 different vegetables that we do. And a lot of people love that because they'll do a vegetable plate. So they can have it more Southern style, like a turnip greens and black eyed peas, or they can go lighter with a steamed vegetable plate. So it's really, again, a, a, a great variety for people to choose from. I've done that vegetable plate many times. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. And then moving into some of the more dinner dishes, what yes. do you recommend there? So the shrimp and crawfish savanna, that, that is a, uh, really a, a signature dish that actually started uh, when I had Gus's Shuck Shack that some people may remember that was on the curve right there uh, where Scenic Highway and Cervantes meets. Uh, so that dish we developed there and then when we closed it, we brought it over here. So that's a Bayou Alfredo sauce. So it's got a little bit of spice to it. Uh, of course, the uh, shrimp, the Gulf shrimp, uh, crawfish, a little bit of mushroom, uh, all that's tossed together with uh, fettuccine pasta and some Parmesan cheese. Um, great, great dish. As a matter of fact, not only can you find it on the uh, dinner uh, menu selection, but we also do a daily special. So that is our Wednesday daily special that, that people can have it uh, as, a, as a special or a feature that day. Uh, and of course, another item that we have on there is a ribeye steak. That's the same CAB steak that you would find at Scopolos or at Nancy's that we also serve here. Uh, so again, not taking any shortcuts on the quality. That's incredible, yeah, really yeah. amazing. Now our viewers are probably hungry right about now and you're preparing <laughs> a special dish for them so that they'll be able to come in with their donation to WSRE. Tell us about that dish. Absolutely, so we're doing the Pensacola Red Snapper. Of course, you know, Pensacola has been known for uh, the snapper for many, many years. As a matter of fact, we used to have the biggest uh, snapper fleet back in the early 1900s before a hurricane took care of it, like a lot of other things that it's taken care of lately. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so snapper, uh, it is the Gulf snapper, uh, totally different from the snapper from the West Coast. Um, so we were baking that with our Scopolis garlic butter, which is a family recipe that we have had for 62 years. Um, and we served that with a uh, starch and a vegetable. Uh, and of course, a, a nice glass of the uh, Roncalado Pinot Grigio wine to go with it. Very, very nice. And you have just really been a huge supporter of WSRE and public television over the years. You've partnered with us and you're doing it once again. What is so important about public television in your eyes? Well, I think it serves a really a great purpose in the community. Um, I can remember back when I was uh, growing up and Earl Peru had the, uh, his uh, cooking show on there and, and you know, never realized until I was a little older that that show really carried nationwide, you know, it was syndicated. Uh, and it was right here in little Pensacola. So it kind of like put Pensacola on the map. And of course, you know, a cooking show before Food Network channel and everything like that. So I, I think it, it's such a great asset to our community to have a public uh, television station here and, and the work that is being done as far as promoting businesses, as far as, you know, education and, and things like that, that ordinarily, you know, a community our size would not necessarily have that opportunity. So, you know, I always feel we're, we're really blessed in the community to have all these anonymities that, you know, for a small community, I think we're way ahead of anybody else. I, I think that's wonderful and we appreciate the partnership. So that, that's fantastic. Well, for a donation of $100 to your WSRE PBS, we are assembling a pack of dining vouchers for you to have a nostalgic foodie experience at the Shiny Diner, Scenic 90 Cafe, and the other restaurants highlighted in this episode of Beyond the Menu. Your voucher pack will include one special dish from each restaurant, along with a paired glass of wine. We encourage you to participate in this interactive television experience to see and enjoy Pensacola's thriving food culture for yourself. 
call or log on to our secure website to make your donation today. Quantities of dining vouchers are limited, so don't delay in showing your support of local restaurants and local public television. And we want to thank you, Chef Gus, for having us in and for partnering with us and all of your hospitality. Sherry, it's a pleasure again to uh, be a part of this and, and thank you so much to WSRE for again um, helping the business community. It hasn't been the, the greatest year for all of us and, and certainly this is a, a good way to uh, give back as well as hopefully promote uh, WSRE and the local community as well. Thank you. The food culture in Pensacola is so diverse. It's all about utilizing local resources and creating an experience that keeps locals and tourists coming back time and time again. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Beyond the Menu. Programs like this one are made possible by contributions to your local PBS station, WSRE. Thank you for your support. Funding for this episode of Beyond the Menu is provided in part by Gulf Power, part of the Florida Power and Light family, safely providing exceptional customer value by delivering reliable, affordable, and environmentally responsible cleaner energy.